before we get stuck into this video just thought you'd like to see the pigs that are out in the new forest at the moment it's panard season which is when the commoners let their pigs out to eat acorns and beech mast that are poisonous to other grazing animals and this is just a few we came across the other day This has been a long time coming, this video. So this is for everybody who has ever asked me, when are you going to do a tutorial? I can't even say a word. Tutorial video on YouTube. This is it. <laughs> this is my go-to technique for how I work pyrography. And I'm going to show you what I do and how I do it. Um, this is for anybody who's ever had a machine had a go and put it away in the cupboard. So let's start. So first off, what machine? There are so many out there on the market. So we have on from the left, we've got a solid state nib stylo type pen. It's the kind of thing you see in the middle aisle of Lidl's and Aldi at Christmas time. People get them given as presents. Um, you can pick them up on Amazon for between 10 20 pound. This one has two temperatures, the one I've got here. I've had this quite a long time. Um, as you see, I've wrapped some suede around it. The pen does get a bit hot. Um, it has limitations, but if you've got one of these pens, you'll be able to do my technique and you'll be able to use your pen. Now these pens usually come with an assortment of different nibs and they just screw in, they're brass. When you put the nibs in, don't over screw them. Don't go as tight as you can. You just want it finger tight, just so that it's held in the machine. Um, if you over tighten with the fact that you're heating this machine up, you're heating that nib up, um, expansion etc if you remember your days of physics you'll know that um, metals can can expand and they can get hard to get out of uh, the the screw can get stuck and you can actually snap those nibs because they're only soft brass now this machine is a little bit different it's made by Dremel and yes hands up we are sponsored by Dremel but however, this machine I bought before our sponsorship, it's called the Dremel Versatip. It's a butane gas uh, tool, if you like. But Dremel do a accessory kit, an accessory kit, which is actually pyrography tips. Um, they say this machine, it's got several uses. You can use it for soldering. You can use it for removing paint. It will work as a little paint stripper. Um, it's basically it's a gas torch, but you can fit other nibs in there. Um, it's got a child lock on it. Um, you can control the temperature. There is a, a, a temperature um, dial, if you like, there. And uh, it's a handy tool to have, actually, in your arsenal. Very good for doing large pieces. So if you're doing a large sign, say, or you just want to work on a large piece of wood and you're burning a large area, um, this is a, a go-to tool for me. Um, apart from that, I do have the wire-tipped uh, pens with the temperature control box. Now, so we're looking at razor tip, we're looking at Antex FireWriter. I do have one of those tucked away somewhere. There are several different types. Robert Sorby do one as well. Um, and whether you're using pens or nibs that are already shaped, or you're using a straight wire, you will be able to get a really good technique built up with all three of these machines so it doesn't matter what machine you have if you start off with the basic one this uh, solid um, state uh, stylus type that's absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with it if you're new to pyrography you don't want to spend a lot of money 
um, you know, having a go at something and then discovering actually, I'm not going to use it very often. I may only use it two or three times a year. Then that that's plenty good enough. But if you get into it and you find that you want to do more, have more of a, a, a sort of a, a fine technique, getting uh, more detail into your work. If you're starting to do portraiture or uh, doing animal studies, etc., you might consider updating and going from a solid state nib up into the um, varying temperature wire nibbed uh, machines. Now, I never teach my beginners um, pyrography on um, plywood. I don't think it's fair to teach you on something where you're already going to be on the back foot. You will not, as a beginner, get a very good result on plywood. You're better off starting off on proper bits of timber. Now, whether you go down the line of blying um, beech or birch, uh, sort of um, pyrography blanks, so boxes, etc., or coasters. You can get them online. Um, whether you go to your local sawmill and see what woods they have, whether you speak to somebody you already know works with wood and will have a good supply of timber for you to experiment on, you're really looking at woods um that are close in grain and what i mean by that is birch beech maple um all those really good if you can get hold of it i would stay clear of pine at this stage if you can um it's quite a lot of resin in pine and it will affect the nib of your pen um, and it can build up after a while and, and be quite destructive. I'd also at this stage stay clear of oak and ash. Um, a little bit like drawing across a record. You'll never get a perfectly straight line um, unless you're really branding the wood. Um, it's, they're not very good for detail work or if you're trying to get a crisp design. So I would stay clear of those. Um, but basically, it's a good idea to speak to your local wood turning club, um, any carvers, uh, anybody like that. It's surprising how many people do work with wood. So uh, always an idea to, to talk to them. So anyway, these are you see here that, you know, I've got wormholes, I've got inclusions, just work round the wood, really. They're all natural. It's a natural material and it has natural flaws and uh, so these pieces I say these are sample pieces that I uh, give my learners my face-to-face -face learners to do they come along they get the prepped wood it's already got the design on it all they've got to do is follow the technique two hours they will have burnt the design and also colored it and the general, general opinion is they've had a good time doing it. And they're all usually really happy with the piece they've taken home. Um, these are the autumn bits that I've been working on. Um, I've only actually done one lesson with these autumn ones and they went down very well. Uh, so people can colour them as they wish. And uh, that's when they can unleash their their own creative uh, element to the piece so never two pieces leave the lesson looking the same which is always fun to see and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a couple of JPEGs of the autumn um, pieces you're more than welcome then to print them out transfer them onto your own piece of wood I'd use some graphite transfer paper or chalk paper don't use a wax transfer paper because when that gets warm and spreads through your wood, it's an absolute pain to try and clean it off. So anyway, we're going to move on now to technique. And so the technique is the airplane technique. Now, if you think of your nib as a little plane, it comes into land. Your wood is the runway. And so you, you don't want to land like a helicopter. 
And what you want to do is glide in. So no helicopters. Helicopters plonk down. But we're going to glide in to the runway, which is the wood. And we're going to glide off again. And what it's about is heat transferring to the wood. The wood and the heat coming from your nib. They have a, it's a funny relationship. The wood is already absorbing some of the heat from your nib before your nib has even touched the wood. It feels it as it comes through. So what you don't want to do is shock the wood, which is what you would do if a helicopter to land on the ground is a shock and you end up with a blobble. So we're gliding, everything's gliding. So you'll see here, I've glided into the wood and we're going to take off again in a moment. But that way you end up with a nice um, blob free line. There's hardly any pressure. It's a bit like writing with a fountain pen. So there's very little pressure. But you'll see there that just by gliding in and gliding off, there's no blob at the beginning or end of the line. Uh, there is a little blobble there, but that's actually um, a piece of carbon. That's uh, from the actual nib and that will brush off. But if I show you a bit close up and the camera decides to doesn't want to focus. But, uh, there we go. It's gone back in again now. Now, don't worry too much about those little bits that you see on the side there. That's literally carbon that's basically it's burnt wood that's uh, coming off from the um, from the sharp blade edge of this particular nib. But as you can see you'll get nice, consistent, sharp lines. And that's what we want. So those bits you can see, just rub off. Now I'm just going to compare the um, lines that we've just drawn with one. If you don't drift down into the runway and drift off into takeoff, and you'll see there that you're getting like an overburn you'll um you'll end up with quite a sort of a blobby effect and you see there you've got sort of an orange area either side of the burnt line um, now we get it a little bit with the other lines but not as much and you're starting to get a blobby look at the end of the line and that's because too much heat has been in one area for too long um, and that's what happens if you just lift straight off from the wood so that's why i say drift in drift out again so this is now the razor tip uh, wired pen so this is the um the skew nib fixed pen and now you see that it's glowing red and that's because the temperature is too high i'm trying to burn wood not melt metal and see now you can see I've just turned the temperature right down and I'm trying to get that redness out of the metal don't want to see it glowing red cherry red or anything don't want any color on it I want to burn wood not melt metal so just waiting for that to cool a little bit and we're gliding in and we're going to glide off and that's when I realise that camera angle isn't quite right. So we shall do that again. So same technique. Glide in. Nice curl of smoke. And glide off. And you see, same consistent line. It's just a bit thinner. Glide in, glide off. And that's the speed you want to go. I'm not digging into the wood. There's no pressure. If you're feeling pressure in your hand or anything, 
you're doing it too hard. So, and you can see, you know, it's the same consistency. It's just how big the nib is, is giving you, a, you know, different, um, it's like using a marker pen and using a fine line pen. Now, you, you can see here, what I'm trying to do is give you an idea of how you would go about doing fur or maybe replicating grass. Lots of lines close together, but still the same technique. Glide in and glide out. And that is how we get texture into fur, feathers, etc. And by going at 90 degrees the other way, you get cross hatching. So you can see how easy it is and how quickly you can you can get an effect. But just that same technique of glide in, glide off. And by changing the angle of your lines, having them closer together at one end than the other, you can see how easy it is to, to get an effect. I'm just going to cross do a bit of cross hatching. And at this stage, I'm just mark making really, but still the same airplane technique. Simple as that. And you can feel the texture. That's a nice thing about wood. Wood never feels cold. That's one thing. But when you add pyrography onto it, it gives it another texture again. And another demonstration of what happens if you uh, land like a helicopter. I think this one is actually more pronounced. And you can definitely see that the lines at the beginning and at the end, you've got this blob, which you don't really want. And how do you join two lines? Draw your first line. For as long as it's comfortable, glide off. And then what you're going to do is glide back into that first line. And that way you should get a nice smooth transaction and a longer line. And a curved line. It's just a straight line. Glide in, go around, use the curve of your hand, glide out. Glide in, glide out. And it's easier to go with the curve of your hand than to go against the curve of your hand. So that's why it's always easier to draw towards you than to draw away from your hand. So if you want to complete that and make that sort of an eye shape, then turn the piece around and do the same line. Last but not least, it's the solid brass nibbed stylus type pyro machine and again same technique glance in if you excuse the camera glance in glance off and you keep to that technique whatever machine whatever nib you're using 
you will not go wrong. Nice, consistent, sharp, clean lines. That is what you want to see on your pyrography. So whether you're outlining letters or doing stylized pumpkins, <laughs> that's what you want. And that's how you get your cross hatching, that's how you get your outlines, whether it's a wriggly line or a straight line, use that technique and you won't go far wrong. So here's me having a go at the autumn design and I'm just using that same technique just to add some grass detail at the bottom. And you see that I go at all sorts of angles. You don't just want straight up and down lines. Grass grows at different angles, so make it different angles. And uh, just keep going back over, make it darker in areas, and that will give you more of a, a feeling of depth. Now that you've done your outlining, you're going to want to add a bit more detail. So we'll start some shading. So this is a shader, this is a razor tip shader, but if you've got a solid state machine, don't worry, your shader looks like a little iron. Um, so similar shape on a stem, and when you turn it sideways, it will have a, a, a finer line, and you can use it as a fine liner. And uh, I'll show you that in a second. So there you go, you can use it on its side, draw it across just as you did before, but if you turn it broadside on and drag it, still using the technique of the little airplane, no helicopters, thank you very much. So glide in, glide out, but that broader stroke will give you shading and you can overlap shading. You can go in circles as in here. Um, the reason that's gone a different colour is it is drawing the resin out from that um, broad streak that's running through the grain. And uh, that's quite resinous. But you just pull it sideways. The more heat you have and the, low, the slower you go, the darker the line. So I've got quite a bit of heat going through here, so it's making it a little bit dark in areas. But um, I'm, I'm just going over where I've done the cross hatching. And it will add texture and it will add shading. But it also gives you more of a 3D look. Now, when you're doing something that's rounded, try and think of that round object and try and work in a circular motion. Don't work in a straight line across the drawing. So try and think of the curve. So if you've got a curved object, work in the curve. I think that makes sense. If you try and draw straight lines on a curve, it will look like, well, it won't look rounded. It won't look 3D. So always try and work in the curve. And you can see there, you've got light and shade. And you can see the difference. I mean, the first one is just the prototype, the coloured one, the left of the prototype. So I will work more into this second one and uh, get more detail in there and it will look more 3D. And you can see I've already improved on the flower a little bit. I've put a little bit more detail in there and uh, added a bit more light and shade. But I forgot the stem, but hey ho. We'll pop that in now. Well, I hope that you all now start going into your cupboards and drawers, digging out that pyrography machine that's stuck in the corner for ages and give the aeroplane technique a go and you'll get the best out of your machine. Have a go, have fun and let me know how you get on. Till the next time, see you soon. Bye bye.